hey, how's it going? All right, well, welcome back, world according to Todd, right? Um, I'm just working on these Jensen CS315s. I think I'm a little bit sad because I think that this is probably going to be one of the final things I need to do to these speakers, you know, like us guys that work on speakers, we just, we just love working on them, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, I've got, um, got my new brass with gold plated connectors here and a set of crimpers. And I'm going to go ahead and terminate these speakers as best I can. Oh yeah. And this thing I'm leaning on here, well, this is going to be the next project. So I figured I'd give you a sneak peek at that because once I'm done with those, I'm going to need something else, another pair of speakers to work on, right? So let me show you what those are real quick. Got them from this super cool dude. He, uh, he's got quite a system home theater set. that's uh, pretty wild. I'll uh, try to include a picture of it so you can see it. Uh, but yeah, these speakers were actually, these are RCAs. Model number catalog 40 517. And the crazy thing is, let me show you this. Yeah, they're really not that heavy either. So they're probably really cheap. Hope you can see that. It says three way, what's that say? Three way standing speaker but it was made for where does it say oh yeah manufactured in china for radio shack corporation so the rca brand was apparently something that they i don't know what radio shack had going on back in the day if this was post uh realistic post optimus or what this speaker is a three-way i'll get it something to set it on i suppose yeah how about a speaker stand sure and i'll show you this bad boy first of all very lightweight especially for a big speaker right that's going to change These things are like brand new though. They're in really gorgeous shape. And there they are in all their glory. All right, so the old, what is that? Some kind of plastic tweeter up there, mylar or something like that. Polycarbonate, I'm not sure. Got the paper cone sealed back mid-range and the paper woofer, and I wanna say, I think this is a 12 inch woofer. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes it is. All right. So 12 inch woofer in a, about a two foot cabinet. Um, I should be able to do something with that. Um, goal wise, I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with it goal wise yet. My thought process is just like with the Jensen's, since this started out its life as a cheap speaker, I'll try to make it better. It'll be a fun speaker, so I, I'm not shooting for studio monitor quality or anything, but uh, just to improve it. And uh, you know, for the $20 price tag I paid for the pair, can't beat that. I think my biggest investment is probably gonna be in the woofer and the crossover. Uh, the other pieces I may have around here, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, yeah, so this is the next project, Sneak Peek, RCA 12-inch three-way, and you saw it first here. This will be my next project, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Getting excited about it. So anyway, uh, I'm going to get on with the, the terminals on here, and you'll see me speed up the video so you don't have to be all bored watching me. But uh, basically the concept is, is that right now I just got a, I just 
put on whatever terminal ends I had around here to try to get these, you know, speakers put together and working and test them and everything. Now that they're done, dialed in, I'm going to leave that tweeter in there because honestly it looks better and it sounds as good, maybe better than the GRS phenolic ring uh, tweeter. So yeah, now it's just time to tighten up the wiring on it and that's pretty much all I'm doing with them for right now unless I get that hair up my uh, butt to do something later on with them, uh, change the finish or uh, do something more with the grills or who knows what. But uh, for right now, um, it is what it is, and this will be the next project. Honestly, I like these because they're black. They look, they look pretty sharp. They don't look quite as vintage as those. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining me today, and I'm going to get to getting here. I got my soldering iron heated up because I'm going to be crimping and soldering these wires, um, making sure they go on the speakers nice and tight because I don't want to mess with them again. So. I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? For sure, I don't want to be demonstrating them, showing them off to somebody, and then have one of the speaker terminals come loose, right? So I want to make sure that they're out there nice. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's keep rolling here, okay? All right. Wow, look at that. Switched the camera view, didn't I? So, all right. Well, hate to do it, but I'm gonna have to turn this music off. And you have to either listen to me or that little soundtrack stuff I play in the background when I'm moving really fast. I will get you, I'll try to get you up a little bit closer while I'm actually doing some of this crimping and stuff, okay? All right, so confession time. I, in all my years of building machinery, working on cars, building speakers, I've never used this type of connector. So is that weird or what? These are crimp on connectors, but they're not like an insulated connector that you would crimp with these guys. They are supposed to be done with these. So you're going to be learning with me if you've not done this before. If you already know how to do it, then you're going to be laughing at me, which that's fine too. And these even come with these fancy little clear connectors, so that'll be kind of cool. All right, let's, uh, let's start with the woofer first and see how that goes, okay? All right, so you gotta pick out the right size. I think that this is the correct size, the, the medium one. I'll sample it on a speaker and see. Yep, that would be the one. Cool. I guess as long as I got the little rubber deals, I might as well put one of those on there. All right, so it's these guys. This is 16 gauge wire going to the woofer. Oh, decisions, decisions. Now, which one of these guys, which one of the settings on here do I need? Now, let's see. I 
guess I'm supposing this this is gonna crimp the whole thing at one time yeah I guess so okay I'm just looking at the inside of the jaw there and it seems like it's it seems like it is designed to well no actually it would go something like this It would go like this, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. It would have to go like this. Like this, maybe? Okay, Dad. All right, so we want it to end up... I think like this. Yeah. And it's kind of stepped in here. So this side is bigger than the other side. So I'm guessing that that would be for this. Okay. Yep, I think that'll do it. Well, let's try and see. I feel like how sharp those are and they're like probably 40 years old maybe 50 years old unbelievable that's what you get with good tools they last my dad actually worked for electromotive division they build locomotives worked for them for 50 years and he bought these for me from Electromotive Division. So this is the same kind of stuff they used there in the plant to build locomotives. And those have been with me my entire career. They've seen most of the continental United States. They've seen Canada. They've seen Oh, the Middle East when I would travel. Over. But those those wire cutters went with me anywhere I went. Okay, well, I don't know. I mean, it's crimped down there. I guess that's all it takes. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on there to hold it. People were asking me if this was leaded solder in the uh, comments. I don't think so. It doesn't say it's leaded. But uh, it's rosin core solder. Uh, the solder I had before this I actually liked better. I had gotten it from Parts Express. It came in like a, a tube, like a little tiny tube, and that had lead in it. Um, and that was, yeah, that worked really good. This I don't, I don't know. It's almost like glue. It's almost like it. it the parts got to sit there for a minute before it gets hard. Just heating this up. Did it. Okay, that's on there nice. I do not like the solder. Okay, well, that was a pain. Looks like it's done now, though.
Yeah, that's a that's a whole lot better. I gotta show you this. Yeah, I'm getting way better at that. These ones, those didn't turn it out turn out so good. And now the really hard part, working with this crappy solder. Okay, Benito. One other thing I'm wondering about is when I hot glued these ports, how that hot glue turned out on the back. Yeah, should be in there good. From what I can, from what I can feel. All right, so that's that's it for that. Let's go ahead and plug our hot glue gun in. Okay, here's the magic. I'm just gonna put a tiny little pump of this in each of those holes, and that'll help the screw bite into the wood. All right. Now, let's see how it works out. There we go. All right. see the part where I put a little bit of hot glue in each of these holes but I just pointed the hot glue gun down in there and put a squirt of glue in each one of these holes so that the screws would bite better and on this one because I had not only the three holes that hold the tweeter on but also like eight other holes that needed filling so those are filled now The hot glue is not hot anymore on those screw holes. It's cool so that it just, it provides a means for this to, for the screw to bite into it 
better and it won't come loose. Voila. Let's see if it works. Mission succeeded. Okay, well, I have already done this speaker, the wiring on that one. And now I'm getting ready to do the same on this one. Um, I've got these brass crimp-on connectors, actually, these are the ones I'm using. So they're pretty nice. It's taken me a little bit of practice to get used to putting them on because uh, honestly, I've never used these before. So they're a little bit clunky, but uh, when they're on, they're on pretty good. And then they've got these like little, um, you know, sleeves that go over them to insulate them. So that's uh, anyway, what I'm doing right now. Let's find a screwdriver.
That's it. Time to get my wife. We'll pick this up again. All right, back from getting my wife. So where was I at? Okay, putting all the speakers back in there, putting a little bit of hot glue inside of these holes. Here's that speaker that the uh, little pad or base for the terminal broke off on. I gotta be really careful with that. I just glued it together. Okay, first up, mid-range. Thank you. 